See, I want you to look around because what the enemy does is he tries to convince you that you're the only one dealing and struggling with these things. But today we're going to expose the lie. Can we do that? Yeah. Hi, ladies. It's Shanna. How are you doing tonight? I wanted to talk to you today about women's worth, self-confidence, self-esteem. I know plenty of women nowadays, especially nowadays, have problems galore with it. I had some woman come up to me today asking me for advice because she's a little younger than me. She goes, hey, you're an older person, right? Like, she thinks, okay. So I know women, they tend to worry about their looks, what they're putting on their bodies, even what their makeup is like, everything from the head to toe, pedicures, manicures, tweets and eyebrows. For me, personally, I've never got my eyebrows tweezed or all that stuff that salons do. If you can do it yourself, you can do it yourself. My makeup, I always do myself. I mean, my makeup is always just as natural as I can get it. Plain and simple, because I don't want it to be looking over caked. And I know women tend to do their makeup overly done, overly dramatic and whatnot. The Bible says you can wear makeup, but in moderation, meaning not to overpower your face with all this junk. Some women you can see nowadays wear makeup or not, they're beautiful either way, but the thing is, God sees you for who you really are. God is the only person that you ever meet, ever have a connection with, that will actually see you from the inside, for what you have on the inside. God will be the only one who ever truly, truly cares what's inside your body, inside your heart, not on the outside. We put that, some women put that on ourselves. Whether someone's telling us, oh, you look good in this or that, some women, and I can speak for experience, have that problem themselves, where we care what we look like and we're not Either we're trying to get attention or we're trying not to get attention. We don't want to be perceived in certain ways. I know when I was younger, I wanted to dress all cute and dress all tight clothes and all this other junk and whatever. But as I've noticed, the generations coming and the young kids we have nowadays, what they're wearing is getting worse and worse and worse. Even if they're in school or not, even if they're, it's a Saturday and they're walking to the mall, crying out loud. I just asked one of my girls today, when did leggings become the new pair of pants? See, generation is getting worse and worse and worse. But, you know, I'm not young anymore. I don't connect with that anymore. So, that old saying goes, you have to be young and dumb to be wise and older. I guess it's true, right? But... The thing is, God made us unique. I know you heard that before, but it's true. You and me, or me and somebody else, can have plenty of things in common, but we are not going to have the same fingerprints. God made us individually unique in every way, shape, and form. He sees our uniqueness, whether another human being sees it or not, whether even we see it ourselves or not. God can always see what's in us. He will always see what's in our hearts, what's in our minds, what we think on a daily basis, talk like, dress, whatever. Whatever we're doing, like right now what I'm doing, right now what you are doing, on a daily basis, forever and ever, you can never hide anything. In your dreams even, you can't hide anything from God. Whether you feel guilty or not, whether you feel happy, whatever it may be, God would be the only one to ever see you for your, who you really are, whether you recognize yourself or not. But this is the thing. Our temples are supposed to be, we are in Christ. Our bodies are supposed to be the temple of God. We're supposed to treat it as such. And it is our responsibility to God, to ourselves, to show this off like it's God's, meaning to not dress in a certain way, which I know we ladies are familiar with, pardon me, <laughs> which our lady, ladies are familiar with seeing, you dress like this, you dress like this, I'm not going to judge you, but skin tight clothes, whole lot of jewelry, whole lot of makeup and all this stuff, God will 
how are you honoring God when you're dressing as such, when you're showing your cleavage, when you're showing your behind? How are you honoring God and treating your body as his temple, where he dwells in? When you're in Christ, you let go of that. You start dressing appropriately. You start dressing where it's, it's not so, so revealing, okay? You start, your makeup, you just get brighter. People will stop and look at you and say, there's something different about this person that I didn't recognize before. That's because when you come into Christ, you exude a certain glow that some people can recognize. Or if they're of the world still, they'll be like, oh, well, there's something different about her right now. What's going on with her? They're not gonna understand. But God will see the change in you and he will be proud of you. When you come into Christ, he will be proud of you that you, your body is, you're dressing differently. Your makeup is, you're not so flashy and all of this stuff. But in the Bible, it says you're not supposed to be wearing all this jewelry galore, all this makeup on your face and being conjoined to the world and how they do things and whatnot. You're supposed to be different. You're supposed to stand out in Christ. Christ doesn't require all this stuff. We put this on ourselves. We get comfortable wearing this makeup. We get comfortable wearing all this jewelry and stuff like that. We get comfortable living how we live. In Christ, you do have to do a complete 180 and change and stop some of the things you are doing. That This is one of the key things the devil does. He puts doubt in us, no matter who we are, no matter what kind of doubt it is. That is one of his key weapons to draw you closer away from God. Say you're doubting how much you make, you're doubting where you live, you're doubting who your friends, family, what you look like. You're doubting everything. You can doubt a body modification that you have, whether you're born with it or not, whether you got in an accident or not, whether you lost a leg or, or you have a big giant scarring face. The devil put doubt and say, oh, that's so ugly. I want to cover it up. And I need to put pounds of makeup on to cover it up. Or I get a, a bruise that's gigantic and people can think this and that, yada, yada. I got a bruise the other week from my job, actually. And people sit there like, I see them, so what? I get a bruise, I get a bruise. I bruise easily. Sorry, it happens. Whether you go through any accidents and you're... Whatever it may be on your body, don't worry about what people think about you or what the devil may put in your head that says, oh, you're ugly, oh, you're you're just hideous, or whatever he may be. You're not that. You're not what the devil wants you to think. The devil will implant anything in your brain to make you doubt everything. The gift of God, the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that he did for us. He will make you doubt everything that you've ever known, everything that you've ever seen from, he will work inside people to make you say, oh wow, you really don't think this or or you really believe that? Even if it's people around you, the devil will input in them like his little minions and make them say, hey, attack this person, attack their thoughts, attack their body image, whatever it may be, and put it in their mind that hey, you're not as pretty as you are, you're not as worth it as you are, whatever it be, whether it's through boyfriends treating you less than you deserve, whether it's parents not paying attention to you, whether it's your school peer members that are talking all this mess about you, that's the devil working in them to attack you, to break you down, break down your self-esteem walls, break down your self-confidence, your self-worth, that's the devil's job, to implant thoughts and, and actions in other people to attack you. It happens on a daily basis, and most people don't see it and do not recognize it. The devil is working in other people to bring you down, to make you not believe, to make anything that you think wrong, anything that you know wrong. That's his job, and it's his job to pull you more and more further away from Christ by everything you see on TV, by everything you're listening to, all the mainstream music, all the movies that are coming out nowadays. Almost everything that you see has a hidden agenda that the devil has put together. You're either not aware of it or you're 
people are stiff necked as it's called stiff but in other words being hard headed I want to read something to you this is Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 it's a little lengthy so bear with me but it's worth it okay it says I beseech you therefore brethren by the miracle mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice a holy acceptable unto God which is your responsible service and be not conformed of this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God for I say through the grace of Un given unto you and me for every man that is among you every other person not to think of yourself himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according to according to as God have dealt to every man measured by faith Having faith that you're more worth than what you think. Having faith that God sees you the way nobody will ever see you. That you're ultimately priceless in every way. You're ultimately priceless more than jewelry, more than diamonds, more than anything you see on TV. Even what you see in the mirror. The mirror will show every flaw on you. But God will see none of that. Even when you're in Christ, your flesh will always be weak. That's why God says the flesh is weak. Lean. Don't pay attention. Try not to pay attention to your flesh and what your flesh wants. Your fleshy urges, lusts, whatever it be. When you're in Christ, you have to try to fight against your own flesh. And the devil will use that against you too. He will put desires in you. Put things you see on TV more appealing. When you come into Christ, it's more of an attack on you. He attacks you more in every way, whether it's through people, what you see, what, what, what you do, whatever it may be. When you're in Christ, you're standing firm with God. You're standing tall and proud and saying that I am Christ, which you originally belonged to, you just haven't realized it yet, when you get to Christ, you're like, this is where I should have been the whole time. This is where I belong. This is where I want to and need to be. We wrestle not against flesh and blood only, but spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. Whether you see it or not, demonic beings and heavenly beings are around us all the time in the spiritual realm. And they will attack us constantly. Whether it may be from other people, from other things, whatever it may be. But God's heavenly beings around us protect us, help us. When we cry out to our Heavenly Father, when we cry out saying, God, I need your help. I need you to help me with this. I need you to help me with that. He listens and His heavenly beings help fight for us, help protect us. But we have to cry out to God and show him that we want his help because when we do it ourselves you're telling God I don't need your help what do I need your help for I can do this myself but God's angels God's heavenly beings will know because God knows every trick every deception every lie everything that the devil has ever done and will ever do that's why it's a spiritual battle between us and the devil constantly that's why there's a heavily and demonic spiritual realm around us constantly the devil's been doing this since the beginning of adam and eve even when the devil first tricked eve into biting that apple off the fruit tree in the garden of eden you know i mean it's human error it's human nature to fall for things sometimes we're not as smart as 
we can be all the time. We don't always see what we should see. Even when, even when God opens our eyes sometimes, we still don't see it the first time. We may see it the second or third time. But God will always leave us clues or give us hints or make certain things happen that will show us what's going to happen or or give us signs of what we should do, what path we should take. We just got to be willing to see them and not ignore them. Because when we ignore God's signals to us, that's when we end up in trouble. And hopefully it's not big trouble. But there's nothing ever impossible for God. You're never going to know how much you're truly worth until you come into Christ. You may be walking the world and living in the world and think you're living a good life and saying, oh, I'm a tough girl. I can do anything I want to do. I can do this and that, this, whatever. But when you come into Christ, that changes. You see a new work in you. You see a new beginning in yourself. You see a different, it's a different, deeper kind of beauty that you're finally looking at with fresh eyes. It's like watching a rose open. A rose is pretty from the outside, but when you open it up and you see all of its glory, it's more beautiful than you ever imagined. That's what we are. That's what women are. Women are the most unique creatures in the face of this earth. We do a lot. We do things that men cannot do, and vice versa. But women, be proud of who you are in Christ. Stand up tall. Don't be scared to take off your gloves and say, hey, I am God's. I'm not going to fight no more my own battles because I'm going to lose sometimes when I fight my own battles. I'm going to let God help me or let God fight my battles for me. Because God will be the ultimate person that will help you through anything. See what you're worth through anything. No matter what you're going through. No matter what happened to your life. No matter what boyfriend, friend, family member, whoever screwed you over. And I could speak highly on those topics. Just saying. Will you come to Christ? He fulfills everything. Everything that was ever taken from you, everything that was ever lost in your life, whether it's through anything, he will fulfill you so greatly that you don't know how you were living without it before. I pray, pray that the women of this world wake up to Christ and see what they are truly worth more than they've ever, ever known from anybody in this world can ever tell them. Thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for watching this. This is Women Unafraid and Unashamed. I'll see you next time. Hey ladies, this is Shanna. Thanks for watching our new series, Unafraid Women. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos so you can get updates every week. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any advice, or anything that you want me to talk about in future videos, don't forget to email me at ourcurrentreality at yahoo.com.